Hi, this is Katherine Dubberly, the answer lady. I make a tremendous number of hats. I design hats for Country Knitting of Maine and for my books. I make them for my family and friends. I knit them for a boutique. And of course, I knit a hundred hats a year for Linda Williams' charity, Keeping Maine Warm. That's a lot of hats. And eventually, there's going to be one that does not fit right. So today, let's talk about how you can shorten a hat that just plain came out too long. This is an alpaca hat, very nice, much too nice to waste, and it came out a little too long. This dimension should be about an inch shorter than it is in order to fit properly. So today we're going to look at how to fix such a thing. This is a gathered crown, but it has a little bit of shaping. There's been some stitch reduction along here. You can see it if you look closely. There were two stitches were transferred together so as to reduce the number of stitches and that's true all the way around the hat and when we open the crown and ravel back to shorten it we're going to lose some of that shaping so I'm going to show you how to restore it first of all let's find the gathering threads when I do this there's never just one it started out to be one but I've always reinforced and stitched across the opening so getting into it is a little bit of a job but we'll do that and I'm not too worried about whether I damage any stitches at the very top because we'll be raveling back and that part will be removed anyway all right my hat is entirely ungathered at the top now I still need to open this seam so let's do that. A seam ripper would be an easier way to get in, but the tip of this scissors is going to do it. We got a little bit of extra yarn here that's from the gathering process that I'll remove. And when all this is cleaned up, I should be ready to start unraveling rows which is very easy first time around I probably will run into some broken yarns okay there's one row removed there's row two removed I've already done the math and I know that removing eight rows is about going to achieve what I want. There's the third row. You may be worried about stitches unraveling more than you want. And while that is a concern, it's not as much of a concern as you may be imagining because there's no pressure on this fabric. That's the third row gone. Four. and also that's two rows coming out at once that's five six but to return to the issue of um, unraveling and running stitches besides the fact that there's no downward pressure on this fabric it's been washed so the stitches are somewhat set and that makes it a little bit easier on me checking with my hand I think once I remove this row that's going to be enough okie dokie now you can see that there is still some reduction in stitch count at the crown but there are our stitch reductions and in order to make the shaping come out nicely I would like the shaping to begin down about here so here is how we're going to handle that first there's an odd piece of yarn for me to deal with looks like there was a yarn join right there and we won't worry about it I'm going to shorten the same yarn that I was unraveling and use it as working yarn next Okay, let's thread 
the unraveled yarn, which is all crimpy, but that won't make any difference, into my yarn needle and start picking these stitches up on the yarn needle in a certain pattern. What I'm going to do is try to leave every third stitch unpicked up, but it needs to be one of the stitches that was not involved in a decrease. That one was involved in a decrease, so I'm going to skip the next one, pick up two, skip the next one, making sure that it's a continuous column of stitches, which it is, pick up two, skip one, pick up two, and I will work all the way around the hat like this and see you when I get done. Okay, now I'm all the way around the hat and we're going to go around and work on the stitches that I dropped, but first I need to thread another length of yarn into the needle and anchor it at the seam. And what we're going to do is drop and relatch the stitches that I did not catch and catch them on this yarn needle. So let's start. These are all caught. This one is not. Let's ladder it down 12 rows. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'm going to latch it up from the inside. So from the viewpoint of the outside, these will become purl stitches. And they will not take up the same kind of room on the crown that the knit stitches do. It will help shape it and make it less bulky. Okay, that's done. My yarn needle. I'll secure the stitch on it. But I'm not going to do any gathering and pulling in just yet. Not on the outside, not on the inside. Trying to find the next loose stitch and ladder it down. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now I'll tell you a little secret. If I made a mistake and laddered down only 11 or went over and did 13 rows, it does not appear noticeable on the outside of the hat when it's finished if you do it now and then. So don't get stressed out about perfection here. But what I'm doing is aiming for an inch and a half of shaping out from the center. And as you know, pearl stitches, or what we're really forming is a kind of ribbing. And ribbing tends to pull in. So that's how we're going to help this crown shaping along. Pick up the open loop and ladder it up. I'm going to continue around the hat doing this. And I will get back to you when I'm finished. But before I go, let me add a couple of thoughts to this. If you had no crown shaping whatsoever and you decided you wanted to create some, you could do this using basically the same method, but you would not need to concern yourself with avoiding dropping stitches that were already decreased. You could just do whatever seemed convenient. Let's see, that's this doesn't count because that's my gathering thread for the other stitches. Three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you could create your shaping by simply dropping every other stitch in case that there was no shaping left at the crown. And that would be a similar effect. But since already I've got a quarter of the stitches of the total hat circumference reduced by decreases that did remain, I'm going to work as I am. Okay, I'm going to go on around the hat and I'll see you when I'm done. I'm all the way around. Here's what it looks like from the inside. And it's really not terribly noticeable from the outside. And here's what it will look like when it's completed. This hat was already done. I'm going to try to open it up so you can see if I open it up where the ribbing marks are. But they kind of hide when it's just laying smoothly. To get to that point, all we have to do now is gather the two gathering threads separately. This one goes to the inside, and this one goes to the outside. 
I prefer to do the inner one first. The inner gathering is done, so now we'll do the outer gathering. You will have to be gentle because it may be impacted to some degree by the other gathering that's already done. And if it is, and the threads hang up, you can just pull up another area of the gathering thread to finish the gathering and then we'll knot this together and stitch across in the way that I always do. I've discussed the fact that I don't want there to be the slightest chance of it coming apart. And after that you'll bury your yarn tails, which you know how to do. So here's what it will look like when it's finished. It's almost impossible, in fact I think it is impossible to tell that anything's been done to the hat. It's a nice hat, it's just an inch shorter than it was. Hope that helps you with your hats.